afternoon. Yes. <laughs> Giving all honor to God who's ahead of my life to the minister of this church and to everyone in the building. Today I will be speaking on love. God is love, but how do we define it? The American Heritage Dictionary defines love as an intense affection for another person based on familial or personal ties. Often this intense affection stems from a sexual attraction for that other person. We love other people, or we say we love other people. When we are attracted to them and when they make us feel good, notice a key phrase in the dictionary definition of love is the phrase based on. This phrase implies that we love. Conditional, con we love conditionally. In other words, we love someone because they fulfill a condition that we require before we can love them. How many times have you heard or said, I love you because you are cute, or I love you because you take good care of me, or I love you because you are fun to be with. Our love is not only conditional, conditional, it is also unpredictable. We love based on feelings and emotions that can change from one moment to the next. The divorce rate is extremely high in today's society because husband and wife supposedly stop loving one another or they fail, they fall out of love. They may go through a rough patch in their marriage and they no longer feel love for their spouse, so they call it quits. Evidently, their marriage vow of till death do us part means they can part at the death of their love for their spouse rather than at the physical death. Can anyone really comprehend unconditional love? It seems, the lo it seems that the love that parents have for their children is as close to unconditional love as we can get without the help of God's love in our lives. We continue to love our children through good times and bad, and we don't stop loving them if they don't meet the expectations we may have for them. This is, a sim this is similar to God's love for us, but we shall see God's love go beyond the human definition of love to a point that is hard to comprehend. The Bible tells us that God is love. Yes. First John 4 and 8, mm -hmm. whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Amen. Amen. But how can we even begin to understand that truth? There are many passages in the Bible that give us God's definition of love. The most well-known is John 3 and 16. Amen. For God so loved the world, Amen. he gave the only begotten Son, so that he shall believe in him shall not perish, but have ever lasting life. So one way God defines love is in the act of giving. However, what God gave, or should we say who God gave, was not a mere gift wrapped present. God sacrificed his only son so that we who put our faith in his son will not spend eternity separated from him. This is an amazing love because we are the ones who choose to reject God. Yet it's God who mends the separation through his intense personal sacrifice. And all we have to do is accept his gift. Amen. Another great verse about God's love is found in Romans 5 and 8. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were, we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In this verse and in John 3 and 16, we find no conditions placed, please God, or excuse me, conditions placed on God. Love for us. God doesn't say, as soon as you get clean up your act, I'll love you. Nor does he say, I'll sacrifice my son if you promise to love me. In fact, in Romans 5 and 8, we find just the opposite. God wants us to know that his love is unconditional. Yes. Yes. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, yes. to die for us while we were still unlovable sinners. Yes. We didn't have to get clean and we didn't have to make any promises to God yes. before we could appreciate his love. Yes. His love for us has always existed and because of that he did all the giving and sacrificing long before we were even aware that we needed his love. Yes. 
Yes, yes. God is love. Yes, and yes. his love is very different from human love. Yes. God's love is unconditional Amen. and it's not based on feelings and emotions. Emotions. He does not love us because we are lovable or because we make him feel good. He loves because he is love. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for the invitation and I want to thank Pastor McClary and the congregation for accepting me Amen. to be a speaker to join you today. Amen. I was given the topic of joy and it's often said that we really only need three things in this world to be happy. We need someone to love, Amen. we need something to do, and we need something to hope for. I'm so happy I was given the topic of joy because I know firsthand that trouble endures for a night. But joy will be here in the morning. Amen? Sometimes when people are given topics, they begin with defining the topic according to Merriam-Webster, the dictionaries, and that's fine. But today, I'm going to share with you what Jesus said and what Alicia says joy is. So, Sister White, Mother White, keep on talking. <laughs> My children tell me all the time I talk all the time. But I never meet a stranger. And I see many of my friends here today. And my heart is filled with joy. All right, all right. Joy, like any other attitude, can come and it goes. It is not guaranteed simply because we are believers in God. As you all know, sometimes as believers, the devil is even busier. Amen. So we, we must find that inner joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must put ourselves in the places where experiencing joy is a possibility. Jesus says, Blessed are you when people hate you. They exclude you, they insult you, and they reject you and your name as evil because of Son of Man. But rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. And this comes from Luke 6 chapter 22nd through the 23rd verse. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and my sisters, whenever you face trials and tribulations of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. As my good friend Julie and the choir just sang, everyone will see you when you fall. Right. But they won't see you when you right. get up. But that's okay, because God sees it, and from God, we receive that inner joy. Now, here is what Alicia says joy is. That's what Jesus said. Peace is the beauty of life, and today I have chosen life. I'm asking each one of you to find a place on the inside of you where there is joy. Amen. Because we can't get it from man. Amen. We have to reach from within. Amen. Amen. And the joy will burn out all of the pain. Oh, yeah. Don't cry because it's over, but smile because it happened. Because your smile can be the source of your Amen. joy. Amen. Amen. For those of you who know me, I'm always smiling. And people have said to me, why are you smiling all the time? But it is the source of my joy that comes from heaven above. You know, we all go through sorrow and hard times. But sorrow and hard times prepare us for joy. Pain and hard times sweep away everything out of our homes. But it must do that so that the new joy will have that space to enter. Hard times shake off the yellow leaves from the bow of our hearts. 
so that the fresh green leaves can grow. Right. Pain and hard times, they will pull up the rotted roots. But we need the rotted roots to go so that the new leaves hidden beneath can have room to grow. Whatever sorrow and pain shake away from our hearts, it's because far better things will take the place of those bad things. I'm here to tell you, if you've never had any pain, first of all, keep living, you will. <laughs> you won't get to experience true peace and true joy that comes from the Lord. The most wasted of all days is one without laughter. We have to get rid, we have to rid ourselves of negatives so that God can fill that space in our minds and in our hearts Amen. with the abundance of joy that he truly wants each one of us to have. Joy is not an emotion that can be forced, fabricated, or fake. Joy is not dependent upon our circumstances because we have to be able to find joy regardless of the circumstances or the places or the situations we find ourselves in. And if you have a true relationship with God, you will be able to go within yourself and find that joy regardless of your circumstances and your situation. Joy is possible when we are secure in the Lord because he will be the lifter of our heads and he will make us know and make it known to us the path for our lives. Now, we have a lot of beautiful singing, and I can't sing. But I have a lot of family out here and a lot of friends, and I have God, and I want you all to help me. And I have my daughter here, and she can sing. And so I'm going to leave you with this. Y'all ready, fellas? Prison cell 
wrote, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. He reminded his reader that they also could have God's grace, which is far beyond human understanding. You too have this unique contentment and peace. Hearts yearn for peace, in fact, and common greeting in many languages is to wish someone like Shalom, Hebrew, or Aloha, Hawaii, even Jesus Christ used it. How about your life? Are you stressed out with your life pressure and wanted more peace? Most people would say yes. The Bible focuses on three areas of peace. Personal peace of mind, doing what we can to have peace in our relationship with others, and peace among all nations. True peace of mind is an inner, an inner calm, contentment of confidence, no matter what the outer circumstances. This seems impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We live in a frightening world. We used to hear of someone being a nervous wreck or suffering a nervous breakdown. Emotions have changed much as terminology. Tension, anxiety, depression, and panic attack are the most common today. On result in other use and abuse of alcohol, legal drugs, or well, or well as use of legal drugs, as people turn to temporary instead of seeking long-term solution. Finding peace in the world can seem hopeless, but the scripture tell us, seek peace and pursue it. Seek it by taking the time to read the Bible, by for the greatest look on peace even written. Pursue it through prayer to the very God of peace. Christ follows and protects from many trials and danger, but not all. In fact, some trials, like prosecution, happen because of trying to live godly in Christ Jesus. The key is to rely on Christ, the source of sovereign peace, and the Prince of Peace. He can guide our feet into the way of peace. To experience peace, you must take responsibility for your thoughts. With God help, you can quit reacting with anger and self-pity. It's not your circumstances or other people that determine your mood. It is your attitude about them. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Today, many good books and websites have, have advised on reduced physical and mental stress. Some key are to learn good intentional skills. Be positive and flexible. Exercise. Get good nutrition and sleep. Learn to relax and rest one day of each week. However, don't trust everything that is written. New Age teaching based on pagan ideas with new scientific sounding terminology have much room in popularity. As people have pushed the Bible out of their lives, they have been filled with spiritual vacuum with dangerous spiritual, spirituality, spirituality. Learning and living by the Bible brings more mental and emotional benefit than any age teaching. Furthermore, instead of being drawn into the false God, one is drawn closer to the true creator God who inspired the Bible. For most people, the most common type of medication thinking on a particular subject is fear or worry. But guess what? Single common in the Bible occurs more often than others. Fear not. But how is that possible? We must replace fear with faith. A childlike trust in your heavenly father, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is staying on you, because he trusts in you. The Hebrews impression translated perfect peace. Here is peace. It refers to kind of peace that God makes possible for human beings. And those who have the peace are hoping for ultimate divine peace in the res resolution. Yes. Trusting God to be your shelter and shade your reference in portrait. David wrote, yeah, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Yes. Worry is a type of fear, and Jesus repeated it saying, do not worry. Worry is a waste of time and energy. The Creator provides for all His creatures, and you are more valued than many scholars. Uh -huh. We do not experience true false faith and peace without obedience to God. His perfect commandment divine the way of peace. Oh, that you have healed my commandment. Then you, then your peace would have been like a river, 
and your righteousness is like a wave of sea. Yeah. The issue of fear is not primarily about emotion. Fear not means to have the courage to do the right thing, even when it seems frightening. Knowing that the Lord your God is with you wherever you go will give you the need, God, courage to go forward anyway. Amen. True peace of mind depends on attaining peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do as Peter instructed. Repent and let, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Two great gifts of God is forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. Result in righteousness and peace and joy. Even better, they lead to the greatest gift of all, eternal life. Yes. The hope of eternal life takes away the fear of death. No other compare, no other compare. The Holy Spirit is a tree life. He said the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Consider carefully the, re the relationship of peace to all the other features that comes through the Spirit. Each helps maintain all the others. Amen. Consider also between the fruit of the Spirit and the works of the flesh, human nature, include hatred, jealousy, outbirth of wrath, selfish ambition, envy, murder, drunkenness, and like God's Spirit, will replace these vices. Yes. Grace to you and peace from God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you was a Greek greeting. On the other hand, peace was a Jewish greeting. Grace to you was exclusive and unified. You are all one in Christ Jesus. Yes. More importantly, the New Testament added great meanings to grace and peace. Grace includes God's wandering gift or forgiveness. Grace heals heals the guilt. It is great to peace. First part of the peace, God's grace also makes us son of God. What peace to know we are beloved the gracious father. Therefore, Christian, greeting up God gave honor to one who gave, who give us grace as a result in peace. Enjoy peace and be a peacemaker. Peace comes to those who intend it to others. If it's possible, as much as we depend on you, depend on you, live peacefully with all men. We are called to be peacemakers. Yeah. Follow the example of supreme peacemaker. Pray that God will make it possible for his people to lead a quietly peaceable life. Pray for peace of mind. Pray for peaceful relationship. And pray for God's peaceful kingdom to soon come. Yeah. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, Prayer, pray. Thanksgiving, let requests be, made, be known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding. And keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. I want to leave you today with this poem that I like and it's called Eternal Peace. We do not need to live in worry, nor to fret, because we know that God is controlled, in control, and He can handle it. He knows what things worry us and causes us great fear. And we may feel threatened, may, may or may not be there. For much of what we worry about are things we do not know. Things that may or may not happen bring in fear of the unknown. The world of God gives us power to have faith to overcome, to rely upon God, Holy Spirit, and trust in His risen Son. So next time you find that you are unsure of what might be, look to God and know that you can have his eternal peace. Amen. Is a native of Eastman, South Carolina, the daughter of the late Walter B. and Celie Eastman, alumni of Barry Park class of 1970, and also alumni of Winsborough County Technical College. Uh, and she's a lay speaker there at the Friendship United Methodist Church, a mother of six, 20 grandchildren, and two great grandchildren. Um, she also rare as rare two children as her own. Always keep God first in her life and allow her to be very successful. She has accomplished so many things as follow entrepreneur, leader, mentor, advisor. She's a business owner of the Hair Gallery in King Street, South Carolina for over 20 years. She has been recognized by the National Council of Negro Women's Incorporation in 2011, 
member of NAACP, president of Circle Number Three in the community, praising a worship member of her church. She's a woman of God with pride, dignity, strong, and faith. And Sister Edna Neeson. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm going to give you all a break. And if you don't mind, everybody stand. Okay. I know you want to stretch yourself so you don't get a little love. You don't get a little joy. You don't get a little peace. So you stretch for your long suffering. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. Okay. <laughs> Just think I would give you all a little break because sometimes we need that in life. And especially when we are standing and battling with long suffering. This afternoon, I don't have to do a prayer. Everything has been well established and protocol has been made. My topic is long suffering. Suffering is patient with going through your suffering. God is always there. He is your strength of your suffering. God will bring you out and suffer in whatever you are going through. But most of all, He's a Savior. He's a healer. He gives the sight to the blind. But sometimes we need our glasses. Yes, he helped the cripple to walk. Yeah. Why not serve a God like that? He is with us at all times. He never, never leave you. Says wait on the Lord and he will give you strength through your suffering. Be of good courage to each other. Tell others about joy, love, peace, and kindness. Yes. Your long suffering is what you go through in life. Amen. Sometimes it could be sickness. Amen. You have to care for someone yes. or a family member. Yes. And all it does for you is make you strong. Amen. And I thank God this afternoon that they allowed me to be one of the speakers. Yes. And on long suffering. Yes. You know, we suffer through the struggle with Hugo. We struggle through the flood, but God allow us. So through that struggle, he allows us to have patience, uh -huh. the long suffering. Some of us gain homes. Amen. Some of them gain new cars. Amen. But through it all, did you remember who gave you that long suffering? Amen. Or did the opportunity came to you? But it came from God. Amen. God made a way for the different auxiliaries to be able to establish yourself Amen. and moving from one degree or another. Yeah. We need the helmet of salvation yeah. and the sword of the spirit, yeah. which is the word of God. Yeah. In my closing, I will say patient. Be patient with one another. Amen. If God is patient with us, That's right. we didn't always been where we at today.
this beautiful church, yeah. Yeah. Elder McCleary, in the name of Jesus, and everyone else in their respective places. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to be up here alone in the mighty name of Jesus. We had a long day, Hallelujah. but it's all about Jesus. Yeah. It's not about me. Yeah. Amen. So I give God praise, yeah. honor, and glory, and I'm so happy that my cousin, Patricia, and the church family here at Mount Carmel invited me, amen, amen. amen to be one of the fruit yes. of the Spirit. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because God is good, yes. and he is worthy to be praised. Yes. And I thank God in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. oh God, I come to you as humble as I know how. Yes. Weary, wounded, sad. Yes. Oh God, but I in your resting place. Yes, yes. Oh God, and I thank you right now for yes. your grace and your mercy. Yes, Lord. Oh God, and I ask you to bless me right now, God. Yes. Cover me with your blood. Yes. If anything try to hinder me yes. from bringing forth your word, God, yes. I ask you to move it out of the way right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, I find it right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh God, and I ask you to bless right now, God, that the people of God will see all of you and not me. Because I know it's not about me, it's all about you. Yeah. And I thank you, God. And I give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 My subject, I had on that letter um, that I gave them meekness. Amen. 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 I don't know why God wanted me to steal meekness, but I'm going to go into Genesis. Amen. I'm gentle today. Amen. We got to be gentle with the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now 1 Peter 2 and 23 says, 
says, who when he was revived, he was criticizing Jesus. He was revived not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. See, Jesus is the ultimate example of someone who are being meek and gentle. Amen? Amen. So we got to be gentle. God wants us to be gentle. Amen. 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 Now, he had all the power in the world, and he, he used it to help others instead of telling them all. He helped them. Amen. That's what he wants us to do, to be gentle. Yes. Yes. Amen. And, he, and Jesus even laid down his life for everyone. Amen. He laid down his life for all of us. Yes, he did. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. He had plenty of opportunity to get revenge. Amen. He could have get revenge. He didn't do that. Yes. Amen. And attacked those who attacked him. Yes. But he did not do so. So he was willing to submit his entire life. To the Father. He said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Amen. And he gave up the ghost in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, gentleness does not mean that we have to get the approval of the world. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. We don't have to get the approval of the world. Amen. Or uh, let people run over us. Uh, we know somebody is doing wrong and we go along with them.
Washington. Kelvin Washington began his law enforcement career with the city of Florence, Florence Police Department in 1990. While there, he served as a patrolman, narcotics agent, and an investigator. In 1993, he joined the Williamsburg County Office, where he served as chief investigator and chief deputy. In 1998, Mr. Washington was appointed as interim sheriff in January 1999, was then elected sheriff of Williamsburg County. This election victory, victory became South Carolina history. He had become the youngest African American to be selected, elected sheriff in South Carolina. He was successfully re-elected in the year 2000, 2004, and 2008. In 2010, Mr. Washington was appointed as the United States Marshal for the District of South Carolina by former President Barack Obama. Yeah. capacity until this term expired in 2018. In March of 2018, he was appointed to serve as the Chief Police Department to Chief of Police for the City of Darlington. Amen. A native, Himo a native of Hemoway, South Carolina, Chief Washington is a graduate of Hemoway High School, attended South Carolina State University, and graduated from American Intercontinental University with a Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice and a master's of science degree in criminal justice from Troy University. His other education credentials were received from the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy, the FBI sponsored Carolina Command College, the FBI sponsored Law Enforcement Executive Development School, the University of Arkansas Rural Executive Management Institute and the National Sheriff's Institute. Chief Washington also was believed, has also believed in service before self. He is an active member of Bethlehem AMB Church in Himalaya, where he has served as a steward and a Sunday school superintendent. Chief Washington is also a member of the Palmetto State Law Enforcement Officer Association, the National Sheriff's Association, and the South Carolina Sheriff's Association, where he served as past president of those associations. He has served as a board member of Williamsburg County Boys and Girls Club and Williamsburg County Vital Agent. Chief Washington also served as a part-time professor at Ori Georgetown Technical College and Charleston Southern University in their criminal justice department. Chief Washington is happily married to the former Patricia McEachin of East Orange, New Jersey. They have three beautiful children, Courtney and twins, Kelsey and Kelvin Jr. It gives me a great honor to call up to the stage majestic name of our Father in Heaven. Amen. It is indeed an honor, a pleasure, but more importantly, a blessing to be with you all this afternoon. I bring you greetings first from my lovely bride, Patricia, and our three children, Courtney, Kelsey, and Kelvin Jr. I also bring you greetings from Bethlehem AME Church, where Reverend Joe Nolan serves as our pastor. And I bring you greetings this afternoon from the city of Darlington, where I proudly serve Amen. as their police chief. I was saying new police chief, but man, I feel old over that now. <laughs> now, I don't know about the other speakers, but uh, I, Ms. Patricia kind of told me I was going to be speaking. <laughs> she gave me a date and a time and just told me to be there. <laughs> not that I'm afraid of her or anything, but I'm not, because I am a lot larger. <laughs> decided to come on anyway. <laughs> now, the only problem I've got with this program up to this point is why would you all put me behind those ladies? <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there like, now what am I going to do with that? <laughs> I see. So I was, I've been tasked 
was speaking about goodness. Speaking about goodness. As the Holy Spirit works in our lives, our character should change. Amen. 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 Where we had harbored selfishness, cruelty, rebelliousness, and spite. After Christ enters into our life, we then should possess love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, as the young lady stated earlier, gentleness, but also self-control. Everything in the list reflects the character of God. And goodness is the one that relates directly to morality. Goodness is a virtue and holiness in action. It results in a life characterized by deeds motivated by righteousness and a desire to be a blessing to somebody else. It's a moral characteristic of a spirit-filled person. Someone with goodness will selflessly act on behalf of, a, of somebody else. Amen. Confronting someone, even a family member, if need be, about a sin, demonstrate goodness. Wow. Now, I didn't say be confrontational when you confront the person, but then confronting them about that sin demonstrates goodness. So does giving to the poor, providing for someone else's children, visiting the sick, volunteering to clean up someone's yard after a bad storm, and yes, even praying for an enemy. Goodness is not a quality that we can manufacture on our own. Goodness is something that comes only from God. In James, we find where it says, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father who is in heaven. This certainly includes a life characterized by goodness and letting the Holy Spirit control us. We are blessed with the fruit of goodness. See, as others see our good works, they will also praise our Father in heaven. See, this goodness does whatever loving wisdom calls for in a given situation. However, this in no way means that one should ever, excuse me, that one should deliver the admonishment, counsel, or even re rebuke with meanness of spirit. In other words, one with goodness does not viciously chew somebody out. See, no, numerous scriptures counsel us to be gentle and tender with each other. See, Paul himself is a model of tact and diplomacy in dealing with difficult circumstances within congregations and between himself and people within those congregations. As Christians, let me say that again. <laughs> As Christians, we must work towards living by the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. I tell people all the time that it's easy to live by the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Now, when you get up in the morning and you start dealing with folks, that's when the fruit of the Spirit kick in. <laughs> Being nice to somebody who has wronged you. That's right. Or saying a harsh word back to somebody who goes off on you for no reason. Yeah. We must remember that a lot of those folks that are carrying on like that, they're dealing with other stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah. Allow your goodness, allow the goodness of God that should be deeply embedded in you as a Christian, allow that goodness to come out. Yeah. Allow that goodness to come out yes. and not go off so quickly Amen. on those folks. Yes. See, these are qualities that are difficult to master, even in our homes, yes. our relationships, yes. at work. Yes. Oh, yeah, even in the church. But as Christians, but as Christians, if we are to live and walk as Christ. Yes. We must remember that as he went through trials and tribulations, so shall we. Amen. As he was talked about, Amen. so shall we. Amen. 
as he was wrongly and unjustly accused, yes. so shall we be Amen. wrongly and unjustly accused. Yeah. So when people talk about you and uh -huh. scandalize your name, Amen. you still have to be good. Yeah. When they call you everything but a child of God, you still have to do good. When your so-called friends stab you in the back, you still must do good. When they start hating on you because God has found favor in you, you still have to So those of us who confess to being Christian must remember that being a Christian means being Christ-like. Hold your peace and do good. Hold your peace and speak good. Hold your peace and be good. Thank you and God bless you. She's been married to Mark for almost 18 years, where they are proud parents of Mark, Arian, II, and Taylor. She's a member of the Pentecost United Church of Christ, where Apostle Fred Graham is the pastor. At Pentecost, Latani is a member of the Pastor Aid Committee, coordinator of education for the youth department, and the Sunday school teacher. She has many favorite scriptures in the Bible, but there is one that she reads daily. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Thank you, Sister Larry. First, I would like to thank, second, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Patricia Brewington for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to be a part of this Fruit of the Spirit program. Yeah. I would also like to thank Elder Claire for allowing me the opportunity. Yeah. I would also like to thank those who came with me. Will you please stand? Amen. When Patricia asked me to be a speaker on this program, I said to myself, me? <laughs> but my response to her was, okay, sure. <laughs> then she asked, which one would you like to speak about? Now there is only one fruit of the Spirit that sums up nine attributes. The fruit of the Spirit is not like a menu at a restaurant where you can choose or make a selection of what you would like. Amen. Hmm, let's Amen. see. I have love with a side of potatoes. Or I think I'll try long suffering with no mayonnaise. All right. The fruit of the Holy Spirit lives inside every believer. So you can't have one and not have all. You can't have peace without having joy and love and all the other attributes. See, there are many gifts, such as the gift of prophecy, the gift of teaching and some others, but there's only one fruit of the Spirit. So with that said, I'm going to talk about faith. We all know that faithfulness is steadfastness. It means sincerity and trustworthiness. Yes. We know that now faith, now. right now faith, is having the confidence in what we hope for and having the assurance of what we don't see. That's right. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about faith in action. Yes. Hebrews 11 is often called the Hall of Faith. Yes. You've heard about the Hall of Fame. Well, in Hebrews chapter 11, it is described as the Hall of Faith because it enshrines or buried men and women of faith who had won victoriously in their lives. Noah, by faith, built an ark to save his family. Yes. He did this because he was warned by God about things not seen. That's right. God told Noah that he was going to let it rain for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, now it doesn't say this in the Bible, but I'm sure Noah didn't see any signs of rain uh -huh. or see any clouds. But because of his faith in God, yes, he, he built that ark. Yes, he did. It was by faith that Sarah, together with Abraham, was able to have a child. Amen. Even though they were too old and Sarah was barren. It was by faith that Abraham offered his only son Isaac as a sacrifice Amen. when God was testing him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abraham assumed that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. Yes. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back 
from the dead. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry ground. Yes. But when the Egyptians followed, they all drowned. Yes. It was by faith that Rahab, the prostitute, did not die with all the others in her city who refused to obey God because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Mm -hmm. Now I've told you about these men and women of the Hall of Faith. Let me tell you about Latanya Parker and her faith. Amen. About a few months ago, back in January, I was at a service at my church and the pastor asked us to give a $20 sacrifice, sacrificial offering. Now like some of you, you know, I looked at my pocketbook and all I had was $20. And again, like some of you, Doubt began to seep in. <laughs> but then that's when faith creeped in. Faith stepped in. And the next day, less than 24 hours, I checked my cash app, which was my account, my bank account, and someone had deposited $150 in my account. I'm not finished. Two days later, I was in food line at the checkout counter. And a gentleman was standing in front of me, paying for his as items, and I had about $50 or so worth of groceries. And when the clerk rang him up, he looked at me and said, ring hers up too. Wow. All because I believe that God would provide, and I trusted him, and I had faith. Amen. So I say to you today, as the scripture says in First Samuel 26, chapter, 23rd verse, the Lord will repay each man for his righteousness right. and his faithfulness. That's right. That's right. Wesley B. Gamble Brown, the daughter of the late Mr. and Mrs. Bernal Great Boy, the mother of four children, grandmother, great grandmother, a graduate of Maiden Community College, associate degree in science, a graduate of Bethel Bible College of Jamaica, New York, pastor and founder of God's Key Ministry, married to Deacon Abraham Brown, better known as an ambassador of Christ. Her favorite scripture is Psalm 27, Pastor Wesley B. Gamble Brown. Bless the Lord. Let everybody bless the Lord. Hey, it's kind of hard for a pastor to get up and elaborate just for a few minutes. <laughs> Truly, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to the pastor of this church and to each and every one of you in your respective places and to Sister Patricia Brewerton, who just wouldn't take no for an answer. <laughs> I'm going to be brief, and I'm going to take my seat. And as you know, it's kind of difficult for a pastor. I don't have time to build. Since I don't have time to build, I'm going to tell you right now that if you don't attend Sunday school, All right. if you don't attend Bible class, All right. what I'm going to dish out to you today it's like putting a stake in front of you and you ain't got no teeth. The fruit of the Spirit is no S there. That's right. 
That's right. The fruit of the Spirit is the characteristics of God. That's right. So if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you should have the fruit of the Spirit. So sometimes I'm misunderstood. Sometimes I'm talked about. But that's all right because I got to be meek. When I'm meek, I'm showing an example of Christ. An example of Christ, I show humility. The Holy Spirit blocks out pride. The Holy Spirit blocks out ignorance. So if I got the Holy Ghost in me, I'm not ignorant, church. Intercollegiate mock trial team. 
member of the Morris Brown tennis team and senator in the Morris Brown College Senate while attending Morris Brown. Representative McKnight earned a Juris Doctorate degree from Florida Coastal School of Law in June 2001. He was admitted to the South Carolina Bar and Federal Bar for the District of South Carolina in October of 2002. He began practicing at the law office of Ronnie A. Sadler in 2002. He became an associate with the Clicus Law Firm in 2003. Representative McKnight opened his own practice the Law Office of Caesar McKnight, LLC, in Lake City, South Carolina, in October of 2007. He practiced mostly in the areas of personal injury, wrongful death, criminal defense, both state and federal. Representative McKnight is a member of the South Carolina Trial Lawyer Association, the Black Lawyers Association, the South Carolina Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, Greensburg County Bar, Florence County Bar. He is a member of WBTW Channel 13 Advisory Board. He's a member of King Street Alumni Chapter, Kappa I Phi Fraternity Incorporated. He is a 32nd degree Mason and a member of Gideon Lodge, number 428 in Andrews, South Carolina. J. Key, Gideon Group Chapter, number, 44, number 440, King Street, South Carolina. King Solomon, Consistory, number 330, King Street, South Carolina, Crescent Temple, number 180, abbreviation AEA, ONMS, Florence, South Carolina. He was a member of the Bethesda United Methodist Church in Lake City. He is a member of the member of Bethesda United Methodist Church in Lake City, South Carolina. Representative McKnight was elected to the South Carolina General Assembly in November 2014, representing District 101 which is composed of a portion of Williamsburg and Clarendon Counties. He is currently served on the Medical, Military, Public, and Municipal Affairs Committee. I give to you Senator Caesar McKnight. Amen. Thanks, Rodney, and thanks for the promotion, but right now I'm still state representative. <laughs> Fraternity Incorporated, better known as the world's greatest fraternity. <laughs> um, I'm delighted to come to you today and to speak on something that is, sometimes God puts things in your life to remind you of things. And I'm here to talk to you today primarily about temperance. Yes. You say, well, what does that mean? Temperance is self-control. Amen. Amen. And I think one of the things that I do every morning, uh, I get up in the morning, obviously I shave my head and my face, and I look in the mirror and there's something I say to myself every morning to get my day started. And I say to myself, you cannot fix what you will not face, regardless of what it is. And you know what it is, I mean. You know when we've been out that weekend shopping and we're scared to look at that bank account and we know <laughs> it's bad and oh God, I shouldn't have bought that. But when you reflect on your life, yes. you will see that most of the trouble that you've encountered is largely self-inflicted and brought about because you, me, didn't demonstrate the requisite self-control to keep ourselves out of that trouble. Amen. If you look at the Ten Commandments on the wall back there, five of them, five of them deal primarily with self-control or the lack thereof. Yes. Thou shalt not kill. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. If that's not a lack of self-control, I don't know what is. <laughs> Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> Thou shalt not bear false witness. <laughs> Thou, Thou shalt not covet. <laughs> Five of them deal primarily with you controlling yourself. <laughs> 
The fruit of the Holy Spirit is a biblical term that sums up the nine attributes of a person or community living in accord with the Holy Spirit according to the epistle to the, Gal to the Galatians. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is contrasted with the works of the flesh, which are talked about in the chapter right before that. And in case you need to know what the work of the flesh is, it says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you say temperance. When you think of temp temperance in everything you do, we know what happens when we eat too much. <laughs> you get that reminder when you go to the doctor and he puts that blood pressure cuff on you. <laughs> the reminder that I got that my love of ribs and barbecue must be tempered if I want to live a long and fruitful life. <laughs> You know that if you want to buy that house that you've been praying for, them shoes that you've been looking at on Gucci.com are going to take you away from where you need to be when you sit down with the banker and they ask you for the 10% that you need to put down. Your road to destruction is oftentimes controlled by you are driving the car. And it's going where you point it. Self-control does not mean you can't have good times or good things. Temperance means the gentle reminder that too much of anything is no good. We talk about love, and we mentioned love before, and love is a good thing, but I don't think that we've distinguished the types of love that there exist. Because, you know, and I know that there are preachers here, and they can correct me when I go wrong, but the Bible was originally translated out of Hebrew, Latin, Greek. And what we say in one language doesn't necessarily mean the same thing in another language. See, when we talk about love here in the United States and in English, we're talking about that lustful love. But in Greek, the word love is nuanced into two different terms. Eros is that erotic, lustful love that you have for your sugar pie, honey bun. Agape is the love, is the God love. I'm reminded about temperance every day, and if you have a small child, especially a two-year-old, they ain't got no self-control. But the Bible says if you love your child, you what? Correct. Correction is love. Now, don't get me wrong. I can't go through the toy department without picking up something, but I'm reminded that this child that I love and want to spoil and give them everything that I didn't have, what they really need and what she really needs, especially after what she did to her mommy is, is some correction. Because if you let them go through the world without correction, you are saying that Regardless of what it is, and no one's perfect, we all need 
temperance and self-control. Amen. Amen. So when you're late to work tomorrow, <laughs> you're late, yeah. not anybody else. Yeah. Don't be behind the wheel cursing, <laughs> blowing the horn, and getting hot. That's right. <laughs> when you step on the scale tomorrow morning, because everybody wants that summer body, because it's almost here, I want you to reflect on all that bread, cake, and cookies you had for Christmas. Then if you just had a little bit of self-control and temperance, you'd be a whole lot closer to that summer body rather than that big winter body you got right now. And when you're wondering, Lord, why am I broke? I want you to open that big walk-in closet that I know most of you have. <laughs> Look around that house at that big 60-inch TV. You know the one you bought just because you had the 55-inch and went to your brother's house and he had the 60. And I'm going to get the TV. <laughs> Remember, just a little bit of humility and temperance will prevent a whole lot of trouble. Thank <laughs> you. 